What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Cornelia, back with another episode of Black News, a podcast where we break down current events, hot topics, and local stories involving Black people. Now let's get into it. It looked like we got us a real rap beef, y'all. We got us a beef, honey. Okay. We got, it looked like, it looks like, it's looking like we got us a rap beef. Now, quick update from last week. And by quick, I don't mean this particular subject uh, or topic area is going to be quick per se, but quick recap to bring y'all back up to speed. Last week, I talked about the looming rap beef between the big three, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and Drake. At the time of last week's episode, J. Cole responded to Kendrick Lamar. Drake was still silent. It appeared that he was like throwing subliminals while he was on stage with like different graphics and kind of lightly trolling, I guess. I don't know. But then after J. Cole responded and saw the outcry and people's responses, he then switched gears, discussed how this whole ordeal was off of, it was different from who he was at the present moment. It was, it was messing up his peace. He apologized to Kendrick Lamar, opened up the, um, the conversation with Kendrick to say, listen, if you want to jab back at me, take, do what you got to do, my brother. But J. Cole bowed out. At that moment, Drake still hadn't said a word. Well, fast forward to this week. Out of nowhere, and maybe it caught me out of nowhere because like I've been mentioning, I'm I don't know what be going on with the rap with the rap boys and the rap girls no more. If it ain't on on social media where I can quickly grasp like the details if it's gonna require me to have some backstories and have listened to the last 10 albums of somebody and have listened for the subliminals and watched it following them on instagram and being their stories and do all this and i ain't doing i ain't got time for all of that okay if it ain't straight to the point and people calling people out by name i do not know about it so all of a sudden rick ross dropped a a a, a diss song now, maybe I'm missing a couple step, but steps, but from where I'm standing, I was minding my business. We, the rap connoisseurs, we are casual listeners. We just the people, the aunties and the uncle, whoever, we just minding our business. And all of a sudden, Rick Ross responded with a pretty decent diss song, might I add. Now, if this is out of order, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Rick Ross dropped his first. Again, pretty, it was pretty solid. It was a pretty solid run at it. Now, Rick Ross in the past has had practice beefing. He done been, y'all remember 50 Cent tried to take Rick Ross down after he uh, squashed Ja Rule. 50 Cent was on his, one of his tears and he came at Rick Ross. Well, Rick Ross low key survived unscathed and continued to thrive. Rick Ross, I haven't listened to his music as of late, but up until maybe the 2014, 2015, from what I used to listen to, the brother used to be jamming. Okay. So I don't know what Rick Ross will be doing in the beef streets, but when he dropped his diss song, I literally had to start asking people how Rick Ross get into it. Like to me, from where I'm standing, it was the most random thing I've ever seen. Well, come to find out in all of this, allegedly okay allegedly and i'm opening it up to y'all if y'all think otherwise or no otherwise please school me okay i ain't never felt older in my life but not as old as rick ross because i believe that brother's older than me let's keep it a hundred he older than me but whatever apparently one rick ross posted a video on his Instagram of him listening and vibing out to the Kendrick Lamar original response. He was in there bopping, vibing, vibing at the time. It doesn't sound like anybody knew why that was the case, where that came from. But then people were saying that him and Drake don't follow each other on Instagram anymore. 
whether it was before or after this, the, you know, that happened, whether it was a result of it, people were like, oh, you know, they don't follow each other on Instagram. So from my standpoint, as an adult, I was like, wait, all it takes to get into a rap beef is somebody unfollow you on Instagram. If that's the point, if that's the case, I got beef with a lot of people, honey, get the bars out because I got rap beef with a lot. So I was like, that can't be the case. Then they mentioned that, that he was on, on social media, uh, posting a clip of him vibing to the diss song. Then people started to say he, it has something to do with Drake flying Rick, one of Rick Ross's baby mamas to a concert. You know, listen, y'all know when you start to get best people, baby mama, girlfriend, hey man, you getting, hey man, that's peak messy. Okay. That's peak messy. Not surprised if it's true, but that's peak messy. Allegedly. Then people started quoting or pointing out a part of Rick Ross's diss where he mentioned how Drake sent French Montana a cease and desist for a song that he was on allegedly. Cause again, I y'all ain't about to get me yammed up for some. I'm just, Hey, I'm just repeating and showing y'all what I've heard during my research. So all of those things were happening unbeknownst to me and not to say that they should happen with my knowledge, because again, I'm old, I'm, I'm elder millennial rap. Okay. So I didn't know all of this, but it was good to get that backstory. So I'm providing that to y'all. So I'm not sure when the next step happened, but out of nowhere, uh, air quote leaked Drake, this song hit the internet. For a while, people were saying, oh, is this AI? Some people were saying it don't really sound like Drake. Some people were saying the bars sound like they were written by AI. Some people were saying, oh, this is definitely Drake. Um, it wasn't released directly from him the way, like it didn't appear that way. So there was a, a good decent amount of time spent where people were trying to figure out if this was really a Drake song. It's called Push Ups. I listened a couple times. Hey man, it's a, it's a good, it's a good entry. Okay. It's a good entry. Drake was, Hey man, listen, y'all know, I, I mentioned before about rap beef and some of the more, from a fan perspective, some of the ones that were made to be enjoyable for the public. After Drake put up push up, put out push ups, this becoming an enjoyable, enjoyable rap beef. We back, baby. Hey, man, we back. Rap beef. And let me say this before I continue on. Rap beef, at some points in time in history, it, it was very dangerous. Okay. It was a time people was getting shot up. We do not want that. We don't want to go back to that. We hope it stays away from that. But the spirit of hip hop was started in the vein, in the space of battling, whether it was MC to MC, DJs battling DJs, break dancers battling break dancers, it was beatboxers battling beatboxers. Beatboxers. People used to literally walk around schools in the eighties. Um, they, I was hearing a story about who, I forget who was talking. Who was? I was reading this. I think because Mr. C just passed, legendary DJ Mr. C. He did a, an interview where he was saying. Before Big Daddy Kane became Big Daddy Kane, he used to walk around school with a microphone in his pocket and would pull it out and just be like, and be ready to battle people. I'm, I'm talking about, that's how it originated. So for us to be seeing rap beef, that is not um, rare. It is a part of the sport of rap. Who rap better? Who got the better bars? It can get a little petty, but that is at the root of the genre, competitiveness. But in regards to this song, let's kind of, I'm going to point out a couple things. Y'all know, I don't know about them. I'm just pointing it out. Cause that's what I, they, that's what I heard and read and, 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 and heard and read. Okay. So in Drake's response, he mentioned Metro Boomin, who was the producer on the track that I believe started this, the one with future that Kendrick Lamar was on. He mentioned just play the drums. Like, I guess Metro uh, allegedly, hey, you ain't about to game Metro. I don't know you, my brother. I'm just, hey, I'm just, this is what I read. Apparently Metro just, he don't make beats. He just do the drums. I don't know. He be jamming to me. But so Drake was talking about just play the drums. Drake, I guess push-ups and drop and give me 50, drop and give me 50. I make that probably 
I'm assuming is a reference to at one point there was a viral video that was going around where somebody, um, Kendrick Lamar recorded himself in some random park in South Central LA just doing push ups. He was like doing jail jailhouse workouts. Like he would do push ups, push ups, push ups, stand up, get in like the, the like the B boy pose, drop down and get do some more push ups, stand up and do the B boy pose. It was just so random. So I'm assuming the push ups reference is in regards to that. They he also um uh, mentioned Rick Ross and called him old and you know, so he touched on that as well. I don't recall if he touched on or spoke about J Cole. Um, but considering that J Cole dropped out, backed out, even if he said something about Cole, I don't think Cole really care. It sounds like J Cole. He just about, he just about living a peaceful life. He want to rap, do shows. And also uh, it, 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 I've been hearing that he's been, giving the impression that he ain't going to be rapping for too long. So you can say whatever you want about J. Cole. He going to look at you like you're stupid and move on. There were other references, but it sounded like the ball has been now thrown back into Kendrick Lamar's court. uh, Asterisk Rick Ross, because we still have yet to hear from Kendrick Lamar. Now, what do I think is going to happen? I don't know. Like I mentioned before on previous episodes, if you would have told me that J. Cole would have done the pivot and apologized, I would not have believed it. Not to say it is outlandish because it has mentioned again, we saw in past, Jay-Z responded um, to Ether with Super Ugly, came back on the radio and apologized because his mom hit him up and was like, okay, you doing too much. So it is not far fetched for rap beefs to get squashed, but we still are waiting on Kendrick Lamar. Do I think he's going to respond? Personally, yes. Do I think he has a lot of time to wait? No, he got to put that response out this week. Unless there's some strategic move where he's waiting longer, because if this, if he came originally on that song with Future and was intending to start some type of rap beat, which I, which I kind of don't think he was intending to start it. I think he was just talking shit, you know, talking that shit. But he gonna have to say something. Do I think it's gonna be better than Drake's response? I kind of do, but I think it's gonna be different. Drake kind of petty and he is, he is up the school of 50 cent. Also, I think that's probably maybe why we can send drop and give me 50 to Rick Ross because him and 50 cent beef. So I think he was kind of tagging in on that. Do I think it's better than Drake? I don't know. Kendrick is deeper. He has poet energy. Okay. He got big koofy energy. Okay. I'm talking about, he got good, big, um, queen, uh, grand rising energy. So I don't know if the diss will rise to the level of petty that Drake's did, but lyrically, do I think it's going to be top tier? Absolutely. Pull out the encyclopedia Britannica. Okay. We going to be up in that dictionary and that encyclopedia, the, the sort, whatever we going to be in there trying to figure out and cipher what Kendrick Lamar talking about. Do I think Drake going to respond? Yes. But I also, same thing I just said, he going to have to respond quicker because that song with Future um, and Metro Boomin came out weeks ago and it took all of this time for Drake to respond. And even when he did, it came out as a air quote leak. That's one thing that I will say that I, that I don't like about current rap beef. People not outright, outright saying what they got to say. Rick Ross saying, he's saying people name and he outright saying it. I don't like, if you going to beef with somebody, say their name and say this your song. Don't be trying to hide. Like, don't do that. I don't like that. Come out with it. Okay. But I'm assuming there must be a reason behind it. Um, So we just going to wait patiently to see what happens. If you guys have thoughts and, or I missed some levels of the beef because again, I'm just, Hey man, this is 40 some year old research that I'm doing. I'm 40 some. Hey man. I, Hey, yeah, Hey, I don't be knowing I ain't in the streets like I used to, but 
If you know or have heard otherwise, let me know and I'm going to come back and share with the Black News listeners. So hit me up and let me know your thoughts about this particular rap beef now that we have an actual beef. Who you think is up so far? I'm not saying Drake is up. I'm not saying it's one to zero. I'm still saying it's zero to zero because we got to get the Kendrick Lamar response and then rate it between the two. But let me know what your thoughts are. You can find me at so- on social media at Cornelia. This week was the very anticipated WNBA draft. Shout out to the 2024 draft class for the WNBA. People's looking forward to this. And y'all know it's because women's basketball is is on a steady climb of uh, increased interest, increased engagement, all of that. It's just a lot of conversation happening around women's basketball and I love it, okay? As someone who was a fan of the sport, not as much as I used to be, but I'm still a fan of basketball. And as somebody who played basketball through the end of ninth grade and sucked at it, okay? Because one thing you ain't gonna ever hear me act like is that I was good at basketball. I looked hard in my outfit, okay? I looked hard in my jersey. One thing I'm gonna be able to do, I'm gonna be able to pull the look off. But your girl was trash. But as someone who's played the sport at a very, 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 very junior level, I respect the game and I'm excited for this draft class, particularly our girl, Angel Reese. She was drafted this year. Angel went, Angel went number seven to the Chicago sky. Our girl, uh, Camilla Cardoso, she went number three to the Chicago sky. So both of them who were competitors against each other in the past. We'll be playing together, which were great pickups for Chicago, as well as other people who were drafted. Rakia Jackson, who played for Tennessee, she went to the Sparks number four. Aaliyah Edwards, who was a UConn player, she went number six to the Washington Mystics. Um, Leela Leela Lacan, I think is that's how you pronounce her last name, went to the Connecticut Sun and so on. As y'all know and expected. Caitlin Clark went number one to the Indiana Fever. So viewership in Indiana, the league all together is about to, it's going through the roof. We already know they were already advertising tickets for the um, Fever's first game, I believe. And I don't know if this is true. I think I just read this somewhere. I didn't do my fact checking. I believe that they even, the team even, move the first game to a bigger arena to be able to seat more people because they expect that many more tickets being sold because of Caitlin Clark's draft of being drafted there. And this was before she was even drafted. So people knew they were like, yeah, we getting Caitlin. Okay. We number one out the gate. Ain't no trades in the draft, the WNBA draft, which I recently learned Um, today, basically there's no draft there's not many trades. It's not like the NBA where you can get picked up from somewhere and then get shipped off immediately or swap for somebody on another team. There's just not enough teams to be able to do that. There aren't enough slots on the team. I, I read that a lot of people get cut every year because the um, number of, of, of available players doesn't match the number of slots or positions or, you know, just like seats on the team. And because there aren't that many teams. So people are talking about there's an expansion in process for the WNBA. Um, The Bay Area is going to get a team in the recent years. And then they were saying that maybe two or three more teams are going to pop up over the next few years. So hopefully so, because the draft for WNBA was only three rounds. And if I'm not mistaken, there are only 36 people who get drafted Every year, only 36, which is crazy. But the main point that I kind of want to touch on, the WNBA salaries leaked. The contract, the rookie contracts came out today. And, you know, it's two sides to this. One, don't nobody want their business out there. So you spread my salary. I don't really like it, but it's sports. We know everybody's salary in sports. But two... A part of me is still not believing this. 
Now, I couldn't find Angel Reese's because it's black news and, you know, we're going to talk about our girl, the black people. But I did find Caitlin Clark in comparison. And, and Angel's is slightly under Caitlin Clark, Clark's contract. Caitlin, her rookie contract, four years, $338,056. In 2024, this is just NBA, WNBA money. This ain't endorsements or anything. She's expected to make her first year $76,535. And in her last year, the four-year rookie contract, she, which is an option, she's expected to make $97,582. Are y'all serious? Are you kidding me? Now, granted, I believe it's only 40 games, and I think it's just like, it's like they play in the summer, so it's not a long season like the NBA. But, um, What? I understand that the WNBA doesn't bring in as much money as the NBA. I think I read that the NBA is still financially backing the, the and keeping the WNBA going. And I want to remind y'all too. I know the NBA looks like it what it what it looks like now, but if you do your research and and you recall history, the NBA wasn't even popping like that. The games was delayed. They wasn't playing them live. The NBA didn't really get pop until Michael Jordan started promoting and going overseas and building the NBA brand. So don't, I want us to stop acting like the NBA came out the gate and was top dog in sports. It was not, it was not. So let's not forget that. But 70 something y'all I'm hooping. I'm out here hooping my ass off. I done practice. I've been in the gym since I was five years old. And I'm talking about me. I'm talking about these hoopers, these girl hoopers. I had injury, shoulder work done, back hurt, getting elbowed to the face, the chest for 70 something. That that can't, it got to be a better way. It got to be somebody, there got to be some more money somewhere. It got to be some more money somewhere. I do not, mm -mm, y'all, I don't like that. If I'm playing and I'm a world-class player and I am the best, one of the best in the world, I would expect to be able to make more than somebody working a day job with a college degree and uh, four years of work experience. I would just expect that these women will be making more than that. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. I knew they wouldn't get paid a lot, but I can't believe it. That's crazy to me, which again is why women's basketball players have historically all gone gone overseas between seasons. Y'all think Brittany Griner, Brittany Griner wasn't just in Russia because she liked Russia. She was in Russia because she needed to get that money. Because overseas, listen, overseas, they don't play about them contracts. They're going to give you your paper. Depending on where you at and who you are, you, come, you making that bag. So a lot of them go over there because... Yes, they would rather probably be in the States with their family and friends and stay here and be able to just have one source of income, but they got to keep hustling and then they play a whole nother season in different countries. So it got to be a, something. We got to find a better way. I just, I don't know. As an as an advocate now for the for the WNBA, because I'm going to be at them games. I'm going to give me some Sparks tickets, honey. Okay, I, I'm, hey, I want to be in there. As an advocate, I am going to to lend my voice to the movement to make sure that women athletes are better compensated because I don't like what I I don't like what I saw. Now, on the other side, is it wrong again to be telling people this? Should we uh, hold the WNBA to a different standard? Mm, I don't know. I'll let y'all decide how y'all feel about it, but I don't like it. So I'm going to do what I can as just a, a, a passerby and a supporter of the game. What do y'all think, though? What do y'all think about this whole the draft one? Are y'all happy for Angel Nim? I'm going to be watching the Chicago games because I want to see how their game translates into the WNBA because we had a lot of the old heads kind of talking about shit, talking about it's a different ball game you playing against grown-ass women now. And a lot of them do. They be playing in Europe. They be coming back. They be, they be, hey, it's a little more physical ball than it is in college. So I'm, I'm excited. Let me know what y'all think about it though. You can hit me up on social media with your thoughts. 
And lastly, I want to get y'all opinion on something that opened it up for, um, for y'all's thoughts. I saw on social media, there was a viral post or a viral video that, that was going around where this little girl, she had, she was no older than 10 years old, was in the beauty shop getting a silk press. She was very tender headed, had a lot of hair, but the stylist or the mother paid $700 for a little girl to get a silk press. Now a silk press is when you get your hair straightened, you get a flat iron, but depending on the stylist, how it used to be back in the day, cause let me tell y'all something. When I was getting my hair done in Hampton, Virginia, and when I was in college in uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2003 and four, my, my stylist over at Fireworks off of Mercury Boulevard, she was giving me that silk press back in 03 and 04. And baby, that silk press didn't run me no more with the wash, set, blowout, uh, flat, all of that. $40 max. That's pushing it. I'm being generous with the $40. Okay. So we've been getting silk presses since the early 2000s, since the 99 and the 2000. So I don't know how the new silk press became this expensive, but $700 for a child's hair. How much are y'all willing to spend on y'all baby's hair? Now, and I'm posing this to the black news listeners with kids because I don't got no kids. So I don't know how much it's costing these days. I know when y'all babies be getting braids, they're going to hit you. They're going to hit you for about 200. It depending on the type of braid you're going to get beat over the head. If you want beads and all that, that you're going to get beat over the head. But braids is a, it's not a, it's not a weekly thing. And they last long. That silk press, I saw that baby and she turned around in that chair and was all excited with that silk press. And y'all know kids be playing hard, okay? That baby hair gonna be poofy. The roots gonna be puffed up in two days. That baby got two days on that silk press. Max, I give you three if she ain't got no friends. But $700 for a week of a hairstyle under under 10 years old. Mm, Hey man, if I had kids, I don't know if I can be able to do it. Okay. Miss Sharon used, our cousin Sharon used to do my hair in the kitchen back when I was in elementary school. And I got a lot of my hair in the back, especially it's thick. Okay. It's thick. And I had really long hair. My shrinkage is real. It's actually long now, but whatever. She used to wash, blow dry, press and curl my hair. Maybe once a month maybe i don't think my mom was paying miss sharon no more than 30 30, 20 30 dollars okay and i saw miss sharon last month and she and i reminded her how she used to do my hair she said who girl you had so much hair like she seemed like she was still in distress to this day but i wasn't paying 700 dollars, and i can tell you right now kenny and ophelia wouldn't been wouldn't have been able to do it okay i would have been out here with dookie braids had those two but whatever what do y'all think and what is the most y'all would spend on y'all baby's hair as an un as a childless woman if somebody hit me up and was like can you give me get on me a couple dollars for my baby hair and they said and it was not braids and they said it was anything more than 75 dollars hey i'm gonna ask questions i may not have it if it's braids i can kick you a couple more dollars so that's what I'm for a non braided style. I 75 and under, but I don't know. I'm out here. I don't, I don't know. Let me know. What do y'all think is too much to spend on a baby's hair? And by baby, I mean like under 10 years old, what's the max amount that you spend? Let me know. I'm anxious to hear what y'all say about it. Y'all can find me at social media. Um, y'all can find me on social media at Cornelia. On this week's episode of Black News, we talked about the most recent update with the Big Three's rap beef. J. Cole has bowed out. Drake has responded. Rick Ross has entered the chat. And Kendrick Kendrick Lamar is still TBD. We also talked about the WNBA draft and our favorites like Angel Reese being drafted to the Chicago Sky. 
also touched on WNBA salaries. And lastly, discussed how much is too much to spend on a young child's hair. Hit me up and let me know your thoughts about all of these topics, some or none, and I'll check back with you guys next time. That's it for this week's episode of Black News, y'all. Thanks again for supporting the podcast by sharing, liking, subscribing, and rating five stars on your favorite podcast app. To find more information about me, you can check me out at at Cornelia on social media, as well as on my website, which is Cornelia.com. And as always, thanks for supporting, and I'll be back next week with new topics and a new episode.